Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I got a little project we're going to be doing. Uh, I've got some uh, Babbitt bearings that need to be re-poured. And a little backstory on this real quick. Uh, uh, last week or two, I've been just really, really busy. I uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to get here in the shop, but I've had a young man that's been doing some work for me, and he's kind of gotten caught up. And uh, I said, you know what? This is Miles McDonald, a college boy that's been working for me. He's been home while this whole COVID thing's been going on and been helping me out a lot just doing general stuff out here in the shop. I said, Miles, you're ready to restore a machine. So uh, I kind of gave him a machine out here to start working on. It's actually a bandsaw, a wood cutting bandsaw, and I'll be giving you some more detail on this in a later video. Uh, and I've been pretty much hands off on it. I really haven't even been down here in the shop. I've just kind of turned him loose. Uh, but he's gotten to a point where he needs a little bit of help, and that is on these bearings. These bearings need to be re-poured. This is for the top uh, wheel on the bandsaw. Uh, there's this casting, actually a pair of castings here that have Babbitt bearings in them. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get that done this weekend. So when he comes back in next week, uh, that he can go ahead and continue working on that bandsaw restoration. So uh, let me zoom you in here, show you what we got. And we are going to get started reporting these bearings. So this is the bearing assembly that goes up on the top wheel. Uh, there's several things going on basically two oil holes here in the top and on the inside when you open this up you got a couple of places for some babbitt and these babbitt areas here uh, these are babbitt bearings i've talked about babbitt bearings before uh, this is a material it's kind of a lead tin alloy it's been around for a very long time and back before we had ball bearings this was pretty much the standard bearing material and uh, while we have pretty well replaced Babbitt bearings with ball bearings in today's world, uh, they still are a, actually a very good bearing material and they actually do pretty well. So um, the downside to them is, is that they wear over time. I guess that's true with any bearing. Uh, but the nice thing about them is, is when they do wear out, instead of having to order new bearings, you just melt the old metal out and you cast a new bearing. You actually pour uh, molten Babbitt in here and do that. So. Um, what I'm going to start with here is we are going to melt the old Babbitt out and then work on getting this set up to cast new bearings. One thing I will note here is on this particular uh, setup, you got really two bearings, one on each end of the casting. The center section is kind of void. Uh, this will fill up with oil and it's kind of serves as a reservoir, but it's not a solid bearing. It's, it's just bearing on both ends of that shaft. That's really what you need. It's just like a ball bearing. You would have a bearing on each end instead of having uh, you know, a solid bearing all the way across. You really don't need all that friction in there. We just need to make sure we got the ends covered. Let's, uh, let's get this melted out and uh, we'll get started on this project. To melt these out, I've just got my casting sitting here in a ladle where I can catch it, and I've just got it propped up over here against the vise. And we'll use the torch and a rosebud tip and just heat it up and melt it out. So um, let's, uh, let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to let these castings cool down, and I'm going to further clean them up. There's my Babbitt that we melted out of there. Um, and anyway, we're just going to let these cool down before I try to handle them. Yes, there's a bunch of junk in there. Of course, there's a bunch of grease and oil and whatever in these that uh, when we burned them out, we got a lot of residue. So um, we'll just uh, get a wire wheel down there, clean those out, but let them cool first. Got these cleaned out pretty well now. and. Again, we'll only be pouring Babbitt on the ends. Um, shaft will lay in here and we will actually pour the Babbitt around this. So the Babbitt will be contained in the shell and it will be formed to the shaft. Now to um, get this thing set up properly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the lathe and I am going to make a couple of bushings that come up on the ends of these and actually sit inside of this groove just barely 
but then also hold this up so that it's, it's not sitting on these ridges here. These are in here to kind of keep the babbit contained in those two ends. Uh, so I'm going to run over to the lathe and make a couple of bushings for this. That will also help keep the babbit from pouring out the ends. Uh, just going to help out all the way around. So uh, let me get over there and get that started and uh, I'll bring you along for the ride. So just got a little piece of scrap metal in here. We're going to bore that out inch and a half on the inside so it'll fit up on that shaft and uh, turn a lip in there that's uh, about inch 750 I think. We'll start by center drilling this so we can uh, punch a hole through there. Start with a 3 8 inch hole just as a pilot. Next we got a 13 16 slowed the lathe down a little bit to pull it up to a larger size. We're going up to one and seven sixteenths, just a little bit under an inch and a half. Got about 60 thou we need to bore out of here, so I got a boring bar on here. That's uh, 20, 40 thou right there. Got about a little over 20 thou to go. Take a little bit lighter pass. So according to that, I got about just a tad over five thou take out of there. All right, looks like we're just a little under one and a half, which is right where I want to be. I'm going to get that shaft and slide up over just to make sure it goes. But it looks like we got a good clearance there. There we go. That'll be good. I'm going to come in here now and uh, face this front. And we're going to cut a little step in there. Don't need much. I need to turn this step down to about an inch 700 thou, maybe just a little bit over that. It's going up into a casting. It's not a machine surface, so it's a little bit rough. Um, not very precise, I guess I should say. And we've got about, uh, let's see, one, two, three, about 400,000 to take out of there. Yeah, we got about another hundred thou. Right in these corners. And now we'll come in here and part it off. test fit this one and uh, if everything works out right we'll make another one just like it. 
So you can kind of see what we've done here. I've taken the bushings, I put them on my mandrel that we'll be turning with here, or pouring around, and those fit right down in those ends. And these serve two purposes, like we said before. Number one, it centers the shaft into the casting. They're up off of those uh, pieces in there that we were, that are those little dams. And it also caps the end of this and helps keep the babbit from pouring out the end because if we pour it in there right now, it's just gonna pour out. So uh, we're still gonna have to dam it up a little bit more uh, using some damming compound. But that right there is gonna go a long way toward uh, helping us out with that. So we are about ready to set this up for a pour uh, now that we've got our bushings made. Now for damming material, I'm using a product called Babbit Right, and this is, you can't get this stuff anymore. Uh, I've still got some that I've had for a long time. It's about the consistency of Play-Doh. There are some replacement products out there, and I'm gonna have to order some replacement stuff because my stuff here is starting to get really dried up and uh, hard to use. But what I'm gonna do is just put some of this down in here and um, I'm just kind of putting it up right behind both of these dams here because I really don't want the Babbitt to go down the center of this thing. So we'll just um, put some in here and we'll let that shaft kind of conform to it. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here with my shaft Press it in place. And that should keep any Babbitt from going into that center section. Next thing I'm gonna do here is we will re reinforce around these uh, bushings that we got on the end. We gotta keep the Babbitt inside. So uh, we'll just uh, mold this in place. Do that on both ends. To the point now we're uh, ready to start heating everything up and get ready for the pour. So you do want to preheat your parts here. You don't want the uh, Babbitt cooling down too quick. You want it to stay molten in, in a, until it forms completely around that shaft. So to help with that, we're just gonna take our torch and uh, heat everything up. Really just wanna get it, you know, a couple hundred degrees. Babbitt melts at around seven, 800 degrees if I remember right. Fairly low melting temperature, so uh, you know, we don't have to get this thing red hot, but we do want to have enough heat in there that uh, everything will just flow good around there and not, not cool down too quickly. Meanwhile, I also have my Babbitt over here melting and I just got a uh, camp stove here with a ladle on it. Um, I do like to kind of skim the top of this before I pour just to get any impurities out. Um, I usually just rake it to the other side of the ladle there. And also I'm using a, a pine stick here. When you put that in there, whenever it chars that stick, that is warm enough to pour. So we are actually ready to pour right now. I'll just bring the ladle over here and we will pour it in there and hope that Babbitt doesn't go pouring everywhere. All right, that one is done. There we go. All right, we're gonna let that cool down and we'll get the other side prepped up to pour it. All right, we have let this cool down. It's still a little warm, but um, 
you know, I can touch it with my hands. I think we're good. I'm gonna put some gloves on though. It is, like I said, it is still just a little bit warm, but I don't wanna burn myself. But um, it is, I can touch it, just not very long. Let's see how this looks. Pull the shaft out and that first pour is about perfect. So to get this down, I'm just going to use a rasp file. This is actually a horseshoer's rasp. This uh, Babbitt cuts really easily. It's pretty soft stuff. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean it up and um, go ahead and get it ready to pour the top half. I'll go ahead and note that I have gone ahead and filled in um, some Babbitt Wright material down here in this bottom. And I've already smoked up my shaft here. Go ahead and get all this kind of positioned where we want it. And uh, I've gone and cut some uh, spacers here. This is just out of some cardboard, some thin cardboard, which I have seen for this purpose many, many times in old machines. Ideally, I like to use a gasket paper but honestly, guys, I couldn't find my gasket paper uh, just now when I was doing this. So um, we're resorting to cardboard. And I need to put some uh, dams in, in here. Uh, so let me go ahead and get that. Just like before, we'll put one on each side of this little uh, spacer in here to contain our Babbitt into that area. Now we can set this on top. And we'll go ahead and snug all these up as well. Little spacers in here. You wanna have some shims between these two uh, layers. As this Babbitt wears out, or wears down, uh, what you want to be able to do is uh, come in here with some, or take one of those shims out and you can actually pull the bearing back down and tighten it back up uh, by adjusting those shims in there. That's one of the nice things about Babbitt bearings is they are adjustable uh, as they wear. Let me get a wrench and tighten those up. I think we're ready to start heating this up. I have got it all clamped down my gaskets are in there, spacers, shims, whatever you want to call them. Shafts smoked up. I got my um, damming material around uh, the bushings on the end. Um, we're pretty much ready to go here. We're going to pour into the pour hole here. We'll pour into this hole right here. This is the actual pour hole that goes in that front cavity. This one here just goes into an oil reservoir. This one will not get used for oil. These two will get used for oil. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this heated up, get my Babbitt melted, and hope we get a good pour out of the top half. This one's gonna be a little tough. Pouring down that hole there. Won't make a mess, but As it cools, it shrinks, sucks down in there, and we want to make sure we got it filled to the top. All right, this one will be a little bit easier. We got a little reservoir here. And we will let this cool. I am going to go ahead and see if I can get some of this Babbitt up. Go ahead and melt it back into the 
slug over there before it uh, cools down. All right, we're gonna let that cool and we'll be back. So it's cooled down enough again where I can hold on to it. It's still a little warm, but not so hot you can't handle it. And we're gonna take it apart and see, see what it looks like. Let's see here. Yeah, we got a little bit of a leak in there, but no big deal. And that top bearing looks fine. It's not unusual on these top bearings to get a uh, couple of air pockets up in the top, but it's not critical at all, guys. Um, you need a place for the oil to go anyway, and that's just an oil reservoir for all intent purposes, so no big deal at all. That piece there will just break right out. Fortunately, it didn't fill up the whole cavity. And I get my file out. We'll dress those down. And I think I think our Babbitt pour turned out just fine. Let's uh, get this shaft ready to go back on the machine. Next thing I want to do is cut some oil grooves in here uh, so the oil can get around. I've um, just got a little Dremel tool with a piece on it. We're just going to grind a little groove there from uh, our oil hole. I drilled that through the other side. We'll just connect it over to this little uh, void that's already in here. That'll make a nice oil pocket. And then we'll just kind of continue across the top here. All right, same thing over here. Uh, got a couple little areas in here. We'll just turn those into oil pockets. I don't want them to go all the way to the uh, to the ends. I want to keep the bear oil in the bearings. Uh, it's going to want to seep out some naturally, uh, but we want to keep as much in there as we can. That's on the top. All right, once that's done, um, I'm going to take a bearing scraper here and just start the process of scraping. I'm just going to do a rough blind scraping here. This is very similar to scraping a ways on a machine. You just kind of knock down the high spots to get that shaft room to turn. And I'm doing this blind right now. We'll tighten it up and see how it turns and see if we need to blue it up and, and um, hit high spots or whether we can just get it to run pretty good without having to do all that. Usually I can do it without having to actually blue it up. But uh, this is clearing out a little bit of space in there, but it's also giving some oil grooves, place for oil to move. This is the bottom bearing cap. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, I'm going to put some oil grooves in, in here as well. These are going to be more um, X's rather than just a groove across the top. The Babbitt scraper will kind of take anything that's high on those uh, grooves I just cut in there. And we just want to give a place for that oil to go and distribute around and really coat that bearing well. This is the actual shaft that I'm going to use. The other one was actually the piece I cut off of this. I just used it as a mandrel to, uh, since I didn't really want to put the heat on the one I'm going to use. 
and I had plenty of extra metal there to do that. Start by uh, putting the collar on the back here. This is just uh, to help keep it in on the running in here. This will run on one side and the actual bandsaw hub will run on the other side and it'll keep it from moving laterally. Go ahead and put some oil in here. Put our shims back in. Drop our top shell on here and get our screws started. And our shaft is turning. It is a little bit tight. I'm going to probably take it back apart and do some more scraping. And uh, I'll go through several cycles of that until I get it where it's uh, spinning nice and free uh, in there. But basically you can see the process. The bandsaw hub will go up on, uh, the wheel hub will go up on this end and this will be the, for the top wheel on the bandsaw. All right, I think we've got this pretty well done. Uh, I've taken it apart. I've done some more scraping. I've got it where it's turning nice now. Um, went ahead and trimmed up the, the shim in there and it's turning pretty effortlessly right now. So I think this is going to be fine. And this is pretty much ready to go back onto the machine. Before I do though, I am going to go ahead and get this painted up um, and ready to go back on. But uh, I think our bearing job is done. I thought I would come over here and just uh, give you a quick sneak peek at the bandsaw itself that Miles is working on restoring. Um, when I got this machine, and I've had this machine for probably 13, 14 years now, and I've just never done anything with it. Hadn't had a shop to work it, put it in until now. But when I got it, mechanically, it wasn't in terrible shape. There were a few little issues, but nothing terrible. And uh, we're just taking the time to clean it up get it uh, uh, restored. It's more of a cosmetic restoration uh, other than these bearings and a couple other little small things. There really wasn't anything major wrong with this. Uh, but I'll be doing a full-blown video on this later on, let you guys see this. It's a pretty neat machine. It's an interesting machine, rather unique bandsaw. Uh, and we'll share more about that later on. But, but right now, our job for the day, which was getting our new bearing poured, I think is a success and it is ready to go back onto the machine. We'll let Miles work on that this week uh, when he's back in here working on the shop. And uh, with that, guys, that is going to be a wrap. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Comments are appreciated, as are those thumbs up. And guys, we will catch you on the next video.